for those who might have been at the opening gala, there was a song, a chorus saying about nose in the air because astronomers are always looking up. But it's true. I, if you are, well, most every astronomer I know just began by the fascination of what is out there, what does it mean, how can I understand it? And you can't touch it. It's, 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 that's why I think people think of it as a, a domain of gods because it's untouchable. You can't put it in the lab. You just have to receive the light and try to understand what it is you're seeing. Well, first that was with our eyes, but things changed uh, around 1610. Uh, when Galileo and his contemporaries introduced the telescope, how did things change well, uh, with that? The more we've come to understand about light, the more we understand how to manipulate it. And it actually first just came from experience. You all know if you hold up a glass of water in front of someone's face, it will distort. And so uh, materials can change the way light things look through them. And so the idea that using a lens or a curved mirror to magnify uh, and to collect light is really the basis of all that followed. And more and more sophisticated ways of collecting light, analyzing light, uh, measuring light uh, is really the history of 300 and, well, 400 years now uh, of, uh, of astronomy. And what do we learn from well, gathering electromagnetic radiation? Uh, light, and I will ask for the first, is something we're all familiar with. If you've ever played with a prism, uh, you know that a prism will break light up into different colors, and those different colors are simply different wavelengths of light. Light is a wave, and red has a longer wavelength, blue has a shorter wavelength, and so we can uh, measure the different wavelengths of different kinds of light and understand something about the nature of that light. If you look a little further, and you really tear apart what a, an electromagnetic wave, what it's called, says will come in handy when we talk about gravitational waves. There are a couple things you can learn or study or measure about waves. One is how big the amplitude of the, of the wave is. You know, surf's up, I'm from California, <laughs> bigger wave, lots more fun. Uh, the other is the wavelength or the space between the crests. And a third is what's called the polarization. You don't uh, experience that so much unless you have Polaroid sunglasses, but uh, uh, it's the angle, the way these little uh, crusts and troughs go, if with, what orientation they're traveling. And each and every one of those measurements contains information. It's like information of distant objects is encoded, and it really is quite a lot like encoding information about the source of that object. What so even sorts of things? What, well, what do you learn? I can look at a galaxy that is um, billions and billions of light years away. And uh, well, no, that's not true, <laughs> but uh, uh, very far away. And measure, for example, its velocity by measuring how the wavelength or the, the uh, difference between crests has changed based on how fast it's traveling. If you've ever gotten a speeding ticket with a, from the Doppler shift, you know this technique well. Astronomers do that to check out speeding galaxies. But things like the wavelength of light that I was speaking about a minute ago, um, they all also will tell you the temperature of the object, the, uh, the chemical composition of the object, um, you know, really just about, ev well, everything we've learned about the things off the Earth have been studied by different types of light. And expanding beyond what our eyes can pick up, the visible, uh, is light from, and I heard in your introduction, mention of longer wavelength light like infrared and microwave and radio waves or shorter, more energetic types of light like ultraviolet light, um, X-rays, and gamma rays. So each and every one of those, this is a lot of information on this slide, but there's a, a lot of information encoded in light. And so the trick of the astronomer has been over the years to just successively decode the information and, uh, and figure it all out. And that's the enterprise we're all part of. 